the Lord of the Rings. Three rings for the elven kings under the sky, seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone, nine for mortal men doomed to die, one for the dark lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where shadows lie, one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them in the land of Mordor where shadows lie. Chapter 1 a long expected party. When Bilbo, <clears throat> when Mr. Bilbo Baggins of Bag End announced that he would be shortly celebrating his 111st birthday, which is 111 in normal people talk, with a party of special magnificent magnificence, there was much talk and excitement in Hobbiton. Bilbo was very rich and very peculiar. He had been the wonder of the Shire for 60 years ever since his remarkable disappearance and unexpected return. The riches he had brought back from his travels had now become a local legend, and it was popular believed, whatever the old folk may say, that the hill at Bag End was full of tunnels stuffed with treasure. And if that were not enough for fame, there was also his prolonged vigor to marvel at. Time wore on, but it seemed to have little effect on Mr. Baggins. At 90, he was very much the same at, as at 50. At 99, they began to call him well-preserved, but unchanged would have been nearer the mark. There was some that shook their heads and thought this was too much of a good thing. It seemed unfair that anyone should possess apparently perpetual youth, as well as reputedly inexhaustible wealth. It will have to be paid for, they said. It isn't natural, and trouble will come of it. But so far, trouble had not come, and as Mr. Baggins was generous with his money, most people were willing to forgive him his oddities and his good fortune. He remained on visiting terms with his relatives, except, of course, the Saxville Bagginses, and he devoted, oh, and he had many devoted admirers among the hobbits of poor and unimportant families. But he had no close friends, until some of his elder co younger cousins began to grow up. The eldest of these, and Bilbo's favorite, was young Frodo. Frodo Baggins. When Bilbo was 99, he adopted Frodo as his heir and brought him to live with him at Bag End. And the hopes of the Saxville Bagginses were finally dashed. Bilbo and Frodo happened to have the same birthday, September 22nd. You had better come and live here, Frodo, my lad, said Bilbo one day, and then we can celebrate our birthday parties comfortably together. At that time, Frodo was still in his tweens, as the hobbits called the irresponsible twenties between childhood and the coming of age at 33. Twelve more years passed. Each year, the Bagginses had given very lively combined birthday parties at Bag End, but now it was understood that something quite exceptional was, beginning, was being planned for that autumn. Bilbo was going to be 11 one a rather curious number and a very respectable age for a hobbit. The old Took himself had only reached 130, and Frodo was going to be 33. An important number, the date of his coming of age, tongues began to wag in Hobbiton and Bywater, and rumor of the coming event traveled all over the Shire. The history and character of Mr. Bilbo Bagginses became once again the chief topic of conversation and older folk suddenly found their reminiscences in welcome demand. No, no one had a more attentive audience than old Ham Gamgee, commonly known as the Gaffer. He held forth at the Ivy Bush, a small inn on the Bywater Road, and, at, and he spoke with some authority, for he had tended the garden at Bag End for forty years, and had helped old Holman in the same job before that. Now that he was himself growing old and stiff in the joints, the job was mainly carried on by his youngest son, Sam Gamgee. Both father and son were on very friendly terms with Bilbo and Frodo. They lived on the hill itself, in number three, Bagshot Row, just below Bag End. A very nice, well-spoken, gentle hobbit is Mr. Bilbo, as I've always said, the gaffer declared, with perfect truth, for Bilbo was very polite to him calling him Master Hamfast, and consulting him constantly upon the growing of vegetables, and the matter of roots, especially potatoes. 
the gaffer was recognized as the leading authority by all the neighborhood, including himself. But what about this Frodo that lives with them? asked old Noakes of Bywater. Beggins is his name, and he's more than half a brandy buck, they say. It beats me why any Bagginses of Hobbiton should go looking for any wife away there in Buckland, where folks are so queer. And no wonder they're queer. Put in Daddy Two Foot, the gaffer's next door neighbor. If they live on the wrong side of the Brandywine River, the right again, the old forest, that's a dark, bad place, if half the tale's to be true. You're right, Dad, said Gaffer. Not that Brandy Bucks of Buckland live in the old forest, but they're a queer breed seemingly. They fool around with boats on that big river, and that isn't natural. Some wonder that trouble came of it, I say. But, be that it may, Mr. Frodo is as nice a young hobbit as you could wish to meet, very much like Mr. Bilbo, and in more than looks. After all, his fat father was a Baggins. A decent, respectable hobbit was Mr. Drogo Baggins. There was never much tell of him till he was drowned. Drowned, said several voices. They had heard of this, and other dark rumors before, of course, but hobbits have a passion for family history and were ready to hear it again. Well, so they say, said Gaffer. You see, Mr. Drogo, he married poor Miss Prima Primula Brandybuck. She was out, she was our Mr. Bilbo's first cousin on her mother's side, and her mother being the youngest of old Tuke's daughters. And Mr. Drogo, he was the second cousin. So, Mr. Frodo is his first and second cousin. Once removed, either way, as the saying is, if you follow me. Mr. Drogo was staying at Brandy Hall with his father-in-law, Old Master Gor. That's a weird name. As he often did after his marriage, him being partial to his vittles, and Old Gorbach keeping a mighty generous table. And he went out boating on the Brandywine River, and he and his wife were drowned. And poor Mr. Frodo, only a child and all. I've heard that they went on the water after dinner in the moonlight, said Old Noakes, and it was Drogo's weight as sunk the boat. And I heard she pushed him in, and he pulled her in after him, said Sandy Man, the Hobbiton Miller. You shouldn't listen to all you hear, Sandy Man, said Gaffer, who did not like the Miller. There isn't no call to go talking of pushing and pulling. Boats are quite tricky enough for those that sit still without looking further for the cause of trouble. Anyway, there was this Mr. Frodo, left an orphan, and stranded, as you might say, among those queer bucklenders, being brought up anyhow in Brandy Hall, a regular warren. By all accounts, old Master Gorbach never had fewer than a couple hundred relations in the place. Mr. Bilbo never did a kinder deed than when he brought the old lad to live back among decent folk. But I reckon it was a nasty shock for those sack spinning little bagginses when they thought they were going to get bag end. That time when he went off and was thought to be dead, and then he comes back and orders them off, and he goes on living and living, never looking a day older. Bless him. Then suddenly he produces an heir and has all the papers made out proper. The sack spinning little bagginses won't never see the inside of bag end now, or it, it is to be hoped. There's a tidy bit of money tucked away up there, I hear tell said a stranger, a visitor on business from Mitch Delving in the West Farthing. All the top of your hill is full of tunnels packed with chests of gold and silver and jewels by what I've heard. Then you've heard more than I can speak to, answered the gaffer. I know nothing about jewels. Mr. Bilbo is free with his money, and there seems to be no lack of it. But I know of no tunnel making. I saw Mr. Bilbo when he came back, a matter of sixty years ago when I was a lad. I'd not long come prentice to old Holman, him being my dad's cousin, but he had me up at Bag End helping him to keep folks from tramping and trespassing all over the garden while the sale is on, and in the middle of it all Mr. Bilbo comes up the hill with a pony and some mighty big bags and a couple of chests. I don't doubt they're mostly full of treasures he had picked up from foreign parts, where there be mountains of gold, they say, but there wasn't enough to fill tunnels. But my lad Sam will know more about that. He's in out and out of Bag End. Crazy about stories of the old days he is. And he listens to all Mr. Bilbo's tales. Mr. Bilbo had learned him it, his letters. Meaning no harm, mark you. And I hope no harm will come of it. Elves and dragons, I says to him. Cabbages and potatoes are better for me and you. Don't go, 
Let's say that again. Elves and dragons, I say to him. Cabbages and potatoes are better for me and you. Don't go getting mixed up in the business of your betters. Are your land in trouble too big for you, I says to him. And I might say it to others, he added, with a look at the stranger and the miller. But the gaffer did not convince his audiences. The legend of Bilbo's wealth was now too firmly fixed in the minds of the younger generation of hobbits. Ah, but he like has likely enough been adding to what he brought back at first, ad argued the miller, voicing common opinion. He's often away from home, and look at the outlandish folk that visit him. Dwarves coming in at night, and that old wandering conjurer, Gandalf and all. You can say what you like, gaffer, but Bag End's a queer place, and its folk are queerer. And you can say what you like, but what do you know... But what you know, no more than you do a boating, Mr. Sandyman, retorted Gaffer, disliking the miller even more than usual. If it's being queer, then we could do with a bit more queerness in these parts. There's some not far away that wouldn't offer a pint of beer to a friend if they lived in a hole with a golden or in a golden walls. But they do things proper a bag end, or Sam says that everyone's going to be invited to the party. And there's going to be presents, mark you, presents for all, this very month, as is. I'm going to take a break on page 25.